Three years ago, I will never forget what my week looked like. On Monday, we were preparing. I said, it's like the flu. I don't think it's a big deal. At the board meeting on Tuesday, we said, we might want to watch this. We'll keep an eye on it. On Wednesday, we canceled community night because eating together didn't seem like that was the right decision. And on Thursday, we shut down the whole campus. On Saturday, we had our first online gathering. I sat right over there under a quilt. It was a meditation service that really doubled as our first tech rehearsal. It was just me and my wife, Karen, doing tech support, a role that she would master over the next two years. <laughs> Anna Zell just recently found the video of that first service. I'm going to post it this week. I watched it, it was 20 minutes. It was very moving. I cried with you. I sang to you. It was scary. I was so scared for all of us. The next day on Sunday, we had our very first online worship service, and we stayed online for two years. One year ago this month, we started in-person worship again. We started outside, and then we moved inside after a few months. Three years ago, I was like, oh, this will be six weeks, two months, maybe, right? It won't last very long. We just need to flatten the curve. And then it would, we would conquer this virus and have a big celebration to declare it over. Three years later, we are still waiting for it to be over. Obviously, as you're hearing by how many folks are getting COVID still. And it is important to recognize that while the vaccines have changed our lives and it means that as meant that many of us won't possibly be dying from it, it is still a concern to many people. Some people feel comfortable just living with it, and there are others in this congregation where it is still a very concerning part of their lives. I'm starting to realize that we may not get a conclusion to COVID, but that doesn't mean we can't have a celebration because we have a lot to celebrate. We need to celebrate that we got through this with a sense of community that is the hallmark of UUCP. We need to celebrate that we cared for each other in new ways. I want to tell you another story of, you know, a random hypothetical brand new minister at her first call of a somewhat large, important congregation that just closed down due to a massive pandemic. Do you know anyone that that might be? This pandemic that had the potential to infect a lot of people and possibly kill some of them. And everyone was scared. Some were looking at unemployment. Some were struggling to find food. Some were trying to figure out how they could educate their children. And this hypothetical brand new minister was just not sure how we could wrap our collective arms around this beautiful congregation and make sure that everyone is okay. I remembered seeing the map of the neighborhood groups on the wall in the Johnson room. I knew that they were used in the past for stewardship, but there was a structure. Maybe we could use that. And then the most amazing thing happened. The neighborhood connector leaders, Sherry Stafford, Val Wiley, and Diana Ashley, along with the organizational and technological help of Gary Azell, I don't know how we get anything done without you. That team got together, figured out a plan to re-engage the neighborhood groups, got leaders in each and every one of them, and made sure that everyone who was active in the congregation was in a neighborhood group. All of these folks who had been activated for one reason, this reason over here, made a collective commitment to shift 
and care for each other and use it in an entirely different way over here. Now, some of these folks did not know what to do in this new role. They didn't know how they should check on each other. We were all floundering on how do we check on each other when we can't see each other? How do we know you're okay? None of us are okay. They were scared. They didn't have training in pastoral care. They didn't even have clear definition on what this new role was. But they were committed to try to care for each other nonetheless. They participated in monthly calls where mostly I was saying, yes, you're doing a great job. Yes, it is making a difference. You are doing enough. They were concerned that they weren't doing it right, even though there was no right to this process. There was just love. There was just care. There was intention to connect. Now, some neighborhoods connected well during the time and still are, and others struggled, but I heard from so many of you that just having someone check on you, saying, sending an email saying, I'm in your neighborhood, how is everyone doing? Here's a joke, right? Walt Doherty sent out things every week with funny jokes and stories, and I asked to be put on his neighborhood group thread <laughs> because I needed them just as much as everyone did. It meant a lot to know that we were still connecting. So today, I want to celebrate you all. You all who were neighborhood connectors. You all who were neighborhood participants. And I want to thank you for what you did to hold us all together. And I want to thank you for saying, I don't know how I can make this better, but I'm going to do what I can to try. Now, after service, we get to celebrate further with a big lunch from our newest members, Mike, Mickey, and Herb. Like, they're already in. I can smell it. Is it taunting anyone else? And you're like, Christine, be done. Be done. I smell the food. But we're going to get to gather in our neighborhood groups and get to see each other, meet new neighbors, and connect. And with this, we have the opportunity to then explore what do we want to do next with this. It was a stewardship tool, then it was a connecting tool. What might it be next? Might there be a monthly neighborhood dinner, a periodic social gathering, a service project? What possibilities could we do with these neighborhood structures? Now, if you don't know what neighborhood you are in, buy the food. There will be sheets on tables uh, by where we are going to be in the annex area. Just find where you live on the map and go find that table during the lunch. But now, I would like to recognize and thank all of you who were neighborhood connectors. I invite Brigitte to come up to give a small but special gift to all of our connectors, a pin of our chalice, the symbol of our faith. We hope that you will wear it with pride. As I call each name and oh to the Lord, I'm not sure that I believe in. I hope that I've got this list right. Tell me if I, if I don't. Um, and if you are online, please write here in the chat so that we can see you. And let's save our applause to the end with one exception. I would like to invite Val Wiley, Sherry Stafford, Diana Ashley and Gary Azell to the front. Can you please come up to be recognized? Thank you for carrying on, for saying yes continually, even when you didn't know what you were doing. I appreciate you all so much. And you get pins too. And now, as I call, I will call out each neighborhood letter and the leaders can come up. For neighborhood A, Trudy Murch and Carolyn Allenby. B, Francis Wiggett and Wanda Lamb. C, Joan Gale. Neighborhood D, Kathy Kim and Robert Eland. Neighborhood E, Ann Chase. Ann is also home with COVID. Neighborhood F, Linda Vance and Sherry Stafford. Neighborhood G, Barbara Cawthorn. Barbara, uh, neighborhood H, Charlotte Carl Mitchell. 
Neighborhood I, Paisley Rossetti. Neighborhood J, Leslie Stalkop. Neighborhood K, Donna Featherston, Elisa Phoenix, and Heidi Singer. Neighborhood L, Walt Doherty. Neighborhood M, Vince Waldron. Neighborhood N, Pat Reed, Elisa Phillips, Susan Morris, and Diana Ashley. Neighborhood, uh, uh, I've got to choose N. <laughs> you are now, Susan. Well, um, sure. Uh, wherever you did it, it was just right, and it was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> neighborhood O, Linda Ikelma. Neighborhood P, Sherry Stafford. Q, Jan Kaplan. R, Val Wiley. S, Kelly Aiken. Can we thank all of these wonderful volunteers? turn back. Thank you all so much. Thank you for saying yes. Oh. And then just for fun, if you were a volunteer that helped do anything during the pandemic, <laughs> if you were on any of our boards, our nominating committees, any of the committees of the board, any of the groups, any of the small teams, can you please stand up? Kathy Kim, you stand up. Charlotte. Thank you all. All of these folks helped get us through and who said, we've never done this before, but sure, let's go. Let's make sure that we take care of each other and this congregation. With grateful hearts and a commitment to our future, we say thank you. <laughs>